best entertainment on the earth. Tune in for Comics with Perch. Hey everybody, this is Perch. A couple behind the scenes things. Uh, well, not really behind the scenes. I don't know what that even means, but uh, people ask me from time to time, like, why do you have such a dull, monotone voice? And the answer is, well, not not so much in real life. It is kind of the nature of these videos. I'm driving, so I'm I'm kind of passively paying attention to the majority of these of these clips. That's why every now and then I do something from home and I sound more energetic. It's it's just the nature of of how it's getting done. When you're driving around, it, it's it's a it's a different, kind of different environment you got there. Um, and there's no back and forth. Like I talk and nobody's talking back to me, so there's no there's no getting excited about things. But but anyway, uh, what always cracks me up, and it is a it's a joke for me. I think I'm the only one in on the joke. But it's a joke for me is I will say completely benign things like, hey, you know, modern comic companies should go to the big bookstores where they're selling lots of books and try and figure out, hey, how is that company selling a lot of books? Can I sell a lot of books? It'd be nice if I could sell some books. I wonder what they're doing that I'm not doing. I think I'll try and figure that out. I'll say that'd be a good idea. And what the, the humor for me is people like, Fuck it. No, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to disagree. <laughs> look, <laughs> how, yeah. how, how does this irritate you? I admit, and look, this isn't trolling the audience. This isn't being sarcastic. God, it's none of those things. Um, when I talk about ESGs and agendas and things, it's like, Hey, here's a, here's a really dull point. And people are like, damn it, perch. Damn it. I, it just, it's, it, it is funny. It's funny to me. No, I'm not laughing at your expense. I'm laughing at the entire situation. How this, this person talking in a very, very, very dry, very dull tone can elicit people just losing their shit. I get it a little bit more for comics, uh, you know, people in comics, so they hear this stuff, and it, it, I'm sure it sounds like I'm talking down to them, like, you know, you really should uh, unzip before you start peeing, because otherwise you're going to make a mess. And uh, it's like, damn it, I like making a mess. Anyway, uh, but <laughs> I'm aware, I'm aware my voice sounds like that. You don't need to tell me. Uh, that but it's all part of the joke. I, again, the, the the part that's truly baffling to me is why anyone's listening in the first place. But that's a whole different different topic. The other question that people ask uh, quite often is, you know, what what is the deal with you and Arby's? Do you secretly like Arby's? Because I appreciate, by the way, people who think that because it does indicate that you know you've caught on to there's a lot that's just not serious about this channel and the things I go off on. Uh, but I can say from the bottom of my heart, I hate Arby's. I hate it. The stuff tastes gross. It's uh, every time. And at about once every 10 years. And you can see for yourself the last time I had Arby's because uh, when when uh, Larry King's book fulfilled in an hour, you know, I was, I was feeling pretty good. I, you know, I was happy. And I said, hey, you, you support Larry. And uh, I am going to, I'll eat Arby's for you. And I film myself eating it. You can see that video. It's me, you know, search Arby's in, in Perch videos, and you'll see me try at Arby's. And uh, it was garbage. Caught garbage. That stuff sucks. So, yes, I hate Arby's. <laughs> I would say I hate their meat, but it's not beak. So I'd be lying. Anyway, um, it's, uh, it's, it's the, the over-the-top, uh, I hate it, is a bit. But the I, I will eat there is not a bit. And uh, I'm proud of my daughters. My daughter's like, Ah, we're gonna piss Dad off, and we're gonna eat at Arby's, and they they went with Mom to go get Arby's, and they got it. And I was just like, "Oh my God, it's like crap." It's like ah ah ah. That's why you listen to Dad. Anyway, um, now we're three and a half minutes into this video, or more, four minutes into this video, and uh, we're getting to the actual topic. Do why you clicked on it? So uh, I've lost all the people who have no no attention span. The secret word is parakeet. Anyway, uh. <laughs> yeah, the topic of this video is um, comic, you know, there's a long history and I, I feel like this is one where my point may get lost or people may misinterpret so I'll give it a shot anyway there's a long history in comics of people inside of comics people inside the comics industry hating people who get successful hating people who are popular and by the way, you talk to anyone who's been in comics for any length of time I'm talking more than 15 years and they will be nodding their heads vigorously right now hearing this. I, it, is, it is a kind of a baffling thing. And it, it certainly happens in other industries for sure. But comics has this, this very weird phenomenon where people are like, we're a brotherhood. This is comics. And we, we all band together because we're all a shared creative, 
group of people who are creative. They will say that. But at the same time, the amount of vicious backstabbing and and crap that goes on for anyone successful is is amazing. Now, you know, and I'll, I'll, you can go down the list, and this goes back a long, long way. This is not a new development. Um, John Byrne, and, and by bear mind, one other little thing I'll throw into this is that uh, definitely people who get successful in comics often do let, you know, what was probably already a pre-existing ego bubble further out of control. That definitely, that definitely does happen. So uh, no, no doubt about that, that, that ego does, uh, does balloon when people get successful and that definitely makes people more likable. But, you know, you look at, you know, I, I remember watching the uh, phenomenon of, you know, uh, Jim Shooter, John Byrne, and uh, kind of, and how, you know, when John Burton, or sorry, when Jim Shooter was was running Marvel, definitely there are some people who disliked him, and he he was successful in that role. He actually pushed the company forward, did some big things. The eighties was a good decade for for Marvel, and some of that's uh, definitely you know credited to Jim Shooter. Not all of it, you know. There were also some pretty major creators that came up during that time period. And there were some comics that hit on all cylinders during that time period. I mean, it was it was it was a successful era from a lot of people, but Jim Shooter was kind of the man at the helm and, and uh, he got to be very successful out of praise and people hated him, hated him for it. Now, during that same time period, John Byrne got very successful. When Jim Shooter was, uh, was kind of ushered out of uh, Marvel, uh, John Byrne openly celebrated this, uh, this event. What was funny is as John Byrne kind of, uh, you know, came and went from Marvel, uh, people openly celebrated his fall as well. Completely different people, but it was it was it, it started. That's why I first started noticing the the interesting side effect of of how these uh, these creators evolved. You look at Todd McFarlane's rise, Jim Lee, Eric Larson, Rob Liefeld, four very different personalities as they got more popular at Marvel, and and really, you know, it was more Todd and uh, and Jim and Rob, those three in particular. Uh, got very, very popular. Um, you know, definitely three different people, different personalities. Uh, you know, Jim Lee never had a big ego. Todd, you know, had a kind of rep for having a pretty big ego during that time period. Jim, or uh, uh, Rob Liefeld and uh, Todd, for sure, both did. Uh, but it was fascinating, the people who kind of cheered them on as they came up. And the amount of daggers thrown at, say, Jim Lee uh, was huge. People were talking complete crap about him. When Jim Lee in the 90s didn't, you know, it, there, there are plenty of, you know, image creators that did paint a target on their back. They said, you know, Todd, Eric, and Rob would go out and say, you know, big, bold things on public and talk about how they're, they're taking over and all this other stuff. You know, Rob doing gene commercials, other things. And so you, you kind of understand where some people will, you know, clap back at that. But, um, but Jim Lee, Jim Lee never did. I mean, Jim Lee wasn't that kind of personality yet. You know, the, the knives came out. You saw the same thing happen with Grant Morrison. You saw the same thing happen with Frank Miller. You saw the same thing happen with um, Mark Blar, for sure. You saw the same thing happen with Bendis. Now, now again, there's a, a whole range of personalities I just said there. And, uh, and so, you know, for example, you may dislike Tom King. He's given lots of reasons, you know, for people to dislike Tom King. But a lot of the attacks... From within comics, I'm not talking about fans. I'm not talking about people at Twitter. I'm talking about people within the industry, coworkers, who went after Tom King, not because you know maybe he was a prick to uh, you know to to Mark Doyle or, or or his editors, but because he was successful. It comics has a jealousy problem, by far, where when people get when people get it made, um. It, it is it is knives out for that person. Smile to the face, knife to the back. You know, and you see these chains happen over time. You know, Kelly Thompson was one of those people who definitely, you know, knifed a bunch of people in the back when she was a lower, lesser name. And then she starts getting higher profile work at Marvel. And, you know, people start knifing her in the back. It's just, it's, it's an amazing cycle that you see play out in comics. And it's very predictable. And, uh, you know, it includes kind of maybe some of the knee-jerk reactions you see to even things outside of the typical industry. Uh, right now, you know, it, regardless of whether you like or dislike Eric July or his politics or his book or anything, you know, regardless of all that, um, 
My belief is that a decent number of the attacks that are that are going his way right now are actually not about his politics or not about the fact that he does things on YouTube or that he's called out the comic industry. My belief that a decent number of attacks on him from people within comics are because he seems to be making money. I, I mean, uh, look, <laughs> here I'll throw this out. I mean, EBS, his personality has not evolved terribly in the last 10 years. The EBS of today is kind of the EBS of 10 years ago. It's been the same guy. Yet the comic industry, you know, didn't it, largely put up with him. There was not a lot of noise about EBS 10 years ago. When uh, he first started doing the the channel, the YouTube channel he did, and with the comics artist secrets and everything, there was there was a remarkable slight amount of criticism. Now, EBS started, you know, taking it to the comic industry more aggressively and and you know, definitely doing all that. But, you know, he also made money off the the Cyber Frog book and other things. And I, I, I'll i wager that, again, whether you're a Kelly Thompson or a Mark Blar or EBS or a, or a Eric July or whoever you might be, or Joe Casada, I'm sure all these people hate being lumped all in together. But a decent amount of criticism, it's not about their politics, it's about their, their success. A lot of it is about their success. I, I And again, that's not unusual. It's kind of human nature. We're jealous of people. But it is it is very strong in comics. Uh, you know, a good friend who still, you know, who is in comics, you know, who's, who's worked as a writer and an editor, um, has said, you know, what's the fastest way to be hated in comics? Be successful. You know, it, it is, it, it is, an intense dislike that starts to creep up on you. And it's very childish. Uh, you know, what's, what's funny about it is it is wholly based on jealousy and this idea that somebody took something away. But here's the crazy part. There's, there's mountains and mountains of evidence and data that shows that, to the contrary, when somebody is really successful in comics, when Brian Michael Bendis, for example, starts uh, doing well as a writer, and uh, you know, raising the sales of the Avengers and the other stuff he's done. What happens? Creates opportunities for new people. Usually a lot of new people. Whenever there's a breakout success in comics that actually makes money, it opens up the door to, to others. It is in the financial and, hell, even ego best interest of people not to throw a tantrum, not to attack, not to let jealousy take over, because generally people who are successful in comics create more business for everyone, or at least for, for other people. Yet despite that, comics cannot get out of its own way. A lot of people, a lot of bad people just get jealous about it. Now, I know there's, there's, there's probably a lot of people who argue will say, no, no, you know, Eric July is a jerk. That's why we don't like him. Yeah, okay. I mean, you know, you, you could say that, but what's funny is that Eric July was criticizing things in comics for a while. It's not like he woke up six months ago and started criticizing comics. He's been doing it for a while. Yet the criticism was very rarely, very rarely do people mention him. He does a comic and it does well. Oh, suddenly, suddenly there's, uh, there's a lot of attacks. It's weird. It's weird how that works. You know, I mean, and it's across the board. Look, uh, Steve Orlando started getting gigs for Marvel. I was surprised by how many people who are, you know, quote unquote friends of Steve Orlando start, uh, you know, stabbing him behind his back. And like me, I make fun of him to his face. I'm, I'm, I, it's all in good fun, Steve. It's all in good fun. It is, uh, this is one of the inherent natures of comics. Hating success. Hating people who have been successful. And it's irrational. And it's self-destructive, but it exists. Thanks for listening.